Hello, everyone, and welcome to the November session of Dr. Spotfire. I'm your host, Neil Canungo, and today we're going to be doing data visualization best practices. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, in the previous polls, we discussed, uh, we asked you all what topics you wanted to see the most of and what you, what you wanted to see more of, uh, and visualization best practices and custom visualizations came up as uh, the top two. Now, we kind of held off this year on those topics because we had a, a big announcement with Spotfire 11, which I'll be talking about in a second. Um, but we're gonna do kind of a two-part thing where today we're gonna talk about visualization best practices and we're gonna do a follow-up uh, in the December session on custom visualizations. So today's session will be myself and Colin Gray on just the visualization best practices. Now I mentioned Spotfire 11. So Spotfire 11 was just released today and there's a wealth of new features in here to help with data functions and custom visualizations right out of the box. Um, if you're using Spotfire 10 or 10.3 LTS, there's been a lot of new uh, features that have come out with all the mainstream releases from 10.3 all the way through to 10.10, and that's all included in Spotfire 11. Um, you can check out the webinar series that's uh, on this link uh, on this, this slide, and you can learn more about what's in Spotfire 11. Um, we also, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we also have custom visualizations in Spotfire. Uh, these are called Spotfire mods. Um, the next session in December, we're going to go into the how-to of creating these. These are created with JavaScript. Um, so if you have some JavaScript experience, you can uh, create these from scratch. But once they're created, they're accessible directly from the visualization panel um, for the rest of the users in your organization. Um, so you can get some of the, the mods that we've created. You can create your own mods. You basically just install them into uh, Spotfire, deploy them into Spotfire, and then they act just like any other visualization you have in Spotfire. Um, so an example of that is this network chart mod that was done by Colin. And this is looking at um, variable importance for predicting lap times in an F1 race. So you see all of those top variables. This is also, um, this is a, a similar network chart that's used for correlation, seeing how those variables are correlated. So this network chart mod is um, a Spotfire mod that is usable just like any other Spotfire chart. So that's an example. It's a really exciting topic we'll get more into next time uh, with a deeper dive. And that session will be done by Andrew Barrage on December 1st. Okay, so getting into today's session, um, if you guys have any questions through the session, you can use a Q&A. Uh, we're gonna use a chat to put out links and uh, some general information. Um, but with today's session, uh, data visualization is a very broad topic. So we have uh, various uh, different aspects that we're gonna talk through uh, and touch on uh, various uh, uh, different components of uh, not just the visualizations, but the assembly of the entire dashboard. I thought I'd start with just some uh, broad styling kind of advice. So some, some of the type of things we're going to be discussing today is how to use Spotfire better with uh, visualization concepts. So I thought I'd touch on, you know, something that is incomplete styling. I, I would consider incomplete styling, not to be too critical of this dashboard, but, you know, there's a lot of defaults in Spotfire. And um, I think we often try to... Uh, add some pizzazz to things and spice things up, but how do we do that in the right way that we're not making things harder to read, that we're adding too much, uh, too much detail, too much uh, chart junk can be considered, or um, the text is not readable. So here is uh, an example where we have, um, you have uh, in inconsistent colors used on the titles here, something to look out for. Um, these, uh, these elements are not aligned. There's HTML table generator we can use to align these. I'll show that later today. Um, there's rounded corners, uh, or, you know, it's a little bit more of a preference, but, uh, generally we're seeing a lot more straight edges and corners and a lot more modern, uh, design. So something to consider, uh, this, this, this title is very non-descriptive. Um, I can't really tell what's happening just by reading this title. This says map chart. Um, and then older versions of Spotfire, you might see where they have uh, this stripe that's used, this color stripe. And that's used to indicate the markings that are used between visualizations, these color stripes. And it's really, in my opinion, more of a 
um, authoring tool where you want to know what, where, which markings are used by which visualizations, but a consumer really doesn't care about that. So I would recommend removing things like that. Another key thing is that uh, there's separate text areas here, and I would recommend combining the text areas uh, and using things like calculated values uh, rather um, in, in formatted ways. And, and so that they're not just all kind of stacked here. These aren't just table visualizations that are a little bit clunky. Um, and then there's things like using the correct chart type. So this is using flight data, and this is showing the number of empty seats. And um, uh, it's not using the correct data type. Sorry, I don't know if I said chart type. I meant to say data type here where there's decimals. So kind of an example of some of this cleaned up. Um, so here is an example of those text areas being used with calculate values to create kind of a clean KPI tile look. Um, there is a gray background used on this chart. The, the data is more important. We don't really, we only need some loose reference in the background. So a, a subtle gray background uh, really emphasizes the, the data that I'm trying to show here. And you can use these custom backgrounds uh, by going to the GeoAnalytics resources page on the community. Uh, the tool tips have been cleaned up and they're appropriate for what the viewer's trying to read. Um, I've done something out of preference here. I've uh, reduced the distance between visualizations so that it's a little bit cleaner here. Uh, it's a little bit tighter uh, between the visualizations. I've used matching colors between the charts and I've turned access lines off, which reduces the noise on the charts. It makes the charts cleaner. We don't need all the access lines. We actually don't even need things like legends in these charts because uh, the axis titles uh, define what's happening and uh, the colors are pretty self-evident of what's happening here. So um, so that is kind of an overview. Now I was going to talk about tables. So we don't talk a lot about tables when we talk about data visualization. We, we talk about the, the visual charts, but I thought it would be good to, to go a little bit different and talk about some principles for table display. Um, so I'm going to show an example in the next slide, but um, it's good to not just sort the tables uh, alphabetically, sort them by something meaningful, like a, a top metric, um, and use rates and proportions, and instead of just totals, um, use, uh, you know, show more than two time points if available, so you can have comparison, um, similar data should go down columns. And, and when should you use tables? You know, when should we have kind of more of a spreadsheet look or a detailed look and when, when should we use charts? Well, charts are used for kind of quick uh, observations of uh, trends of data. You you're wanna make <clears throat> comparisons on um, broad, broad ranges of data um, and you're not necessarily looking for specific values, but if those specific values are very important. That's when you wanna start considering tables. And also if you have less than 10 or 20 um, elements, I would say really it's uh, you know, 10 or 15 elements, that's when a table comes in, in handy. Once you start going beyond you know, 20 rows, 15, 20 rows, it gets very hard for the human eye to like make sense of all of the numbers. And that's where charts start to become more valuable. So when you wanna see specific values, not overall trends, and you wanna compare individual values. And also if you wanna see some specific summary statistics, like uh, some averages, means, um, minimums, maximums, things like that. Um, so, so some examples here. Um, so this left table is shown with, uh, this is arranged by uh, the, uh, this is arranged by alphabetical order. And so that's really easy to look up something if I was looking for a specific type of uh, cancer that's shown here. Um, but what I really wanna see is something more informative and insightful. So this is actually, this one on the right, which I think is improved is sorted by the incidence. So it's, it's, it's sorted by that, which is giving me value right off the bat. Um, now the, uh, the other aspect is this incidence gets a little bit harder to read with all of these long numbers in here. So adding a comma in, and this is something I generally think is useful for even your, your graphical displays, your, your charts, is just going ahead and adding that comma in, making sure your data types don't have too many decimals or too many values that are, are not needed, I think helps make it readable. And the other aspect is the alignment. So you want to align text to the left side of the uh, column. You want to align the titles with the cell values. And on the right, uh, you want to align uh, numerical values. So you numerical values align to the right, 
um, and also the the header is aligned with that. And this allows you to uh, easily see the um, uh, the uh, significant digits here. You can see where 11.2 and 4.7, the decimal point is all over the place. It's a little bit harder to read. It's much easier to read on the right here. Um, some line charts, quick thing is, uh, you know, add title or add labels to the lines when possible, um, not on the legend. And more than four lines can be very difficult to follow. So consider that um, if you want to show some lines that are gray in the background, if you have a lot of lines and then you want to emphasize up to four lines uh, is, in uh, particular, you can emphasize four with color, up to four with colors and then use some gray lines in the background. Um, but just wanted to quickly talk about the, you know, the line charts. Now, uh, kind of going back up to ab abstracting up to the uh, pattern perception um, and how humans recognize patterns and visual information. Um, so kind of Edward Tufte breaks this into three groups, uh, detection, assembly, and estimation. Uh, so detection is recognizing the shapes and the, uh, the geometries that are used if you're using a bar chart, if you're using um, a scatter plot with uh, size markers, detecting uh, and recognizing the geometries. Um, and then assembly is uh, grouping uh, those elements, uh, how, they're, how the pattern of how they're arranged together, where the, the, the different shapes within a chart or how they're arranged relative to each other. An estimation is looking at the magnitude, the, the sizes of it. So the sizes of bars, the size of, of dots in a, in a scatter plot. Um, so these are uh, three fundamental areas of pattern perception that might be useful to keep in mind if you're going into building mods, visualization mods, um, and thinking about some custom visualizations and what are important. So we have a cheat sheet. There's a link at the bottom of this slide. Um, there's a cheat sheet on just some common types of charts depending on what you're trying to communicate. So comparison, distribution, composition, relationship, uh, there's different ways to communicate this. These are, of course, this is not a fully inclusive list. There are different charts that you can use to communicate, but sort of things to pay attention to, like over time, you're using things like, like uh, line charts. And when you're doing composition, you want to look at things like bar charts that, that will show composition. Um, you know, pie charts are used. Pie charts are not my favorite. I think they're very difficult to read, but if you are really just trying to show, show composition of one element compared to other elements, I think that it can sometimes be used. And, and what I mean by that is if you're comparing, uh, you know, if you have one, um, uh, if you have one variable that's really dominant and dominant, or, you know, one, one measurement that's really dominant over all the other measurements, then um, I think that a pie chart can, can be useful for showing like that composition of the total. But I generally go to bar charts instead and, and I think they're a little bit easier to read. Humans have a hard time recognizing angles. Um, if you look even at this example of a pie chart, uh, the green and the yellow look very close together uh, on size. It's hard to see which one is, is really bigger than the other. Um, so this is just a kind of starting point on thinking about what are the components of the charts um, and I hope to go into this in some future uh, presentation, going into more of the theory of, of how these uh, graphical elements are, are constructed for human perception. Um, so next is gonna go into color usage. And uh, this will be kind of a, a little bit of a, the, my closing points before I hand off to Colin, who's gonna show um, some overall assembly and, and improving usability in, in, in dashboards. So some color wheel basics. This is also on our Spotfire cheat sheets, a uh, link at the bottom uh, right there. Uh, so your rotation, and, and I think actually, let me just pause and say, I think that colors are the um, one of the easiest ways to improve your dashboard from both an aesthetics and readability point of view. Um, I think using the right charts is, uh, I mean, I see some people, you know, a lot of us, we can, we can struggle with that sometimes, but um, we mostly, I think we get the charts right. We, we, we get a good sense of what charts to show. Um, but color is where I think people struggle the most because it's a very abstract concept. It almost blends into the art and the science. Um, but there is some science behind how you communicate uh, with colors and, and data visualization. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the basics, which is some terminology is, you know, your position around the color wheel is your hue, uh, your um, 
your saturation or your tint is as you go in and out. Um, you have things like primary colors, you have secondary colors. Um, and importantly, I like to talk about warm and cool colors. Uh, cool colors are very calming. Um, uh, warm colors can generate excitement and alert. So when you are doing just a general report uh, and you're just trying to convey descriptive information, like just a report, you're not trying to you know, flag an exception. Uh, I think cool colors, you know, blues and greens and purples, those are, are good to use. Um, interestingly, I think in the past uh, few years, we've seen purples and pinks become more popular as a primary uh, dashboard color, which I think is, is working well. Um, but when you want to draw attention to things like anomalies on a signal or maybe um, a poor uh, sales uh, a result or something, um, maybe a, a loss in sales, something, um, you, you loss in revenue, um, you know, something like a red value to draw attention to that can be used or uh, exciting warm color can be used. Um, analogous colors are next to each other in color wheel. We'll talk about that in some color schemes in two slides. Uh, complementary on opposite. So when you're trying to compare binary things, true or false, uh, yes or no, Democrat, Republican, you know, um, you know, you know, those type of binary type of comparisons, I think uh, that's where you want to look at opposite sides of the color wheel. Um, analogous is showing degrees of things. Um, and then you have triadic, which is for like kind of categorical and qualitative type stuff. Um, so some color palette tools are uh, the Color Brewer. Uh, this is by Cynthia Brewer, and she. This I'm actually going to jump to this in a second. There is a Color Wheel by Adobe, and a, my new favorite is this Color Palette Generator. So let me go to show you uh, some examples. Here it is. My first. Here we go. Okay. So Color Brewer. Um, actually, sorry, let me, I think I skipped ahead a little bit here. Let me, let me talk quickly about, um, before I go into picking out colors, um, I'll just talk about, so this is binary. These are, there's a four types of color themes. You got binary, you got qualitative, sequential, and diverging. There is a video on YouTube where I go, um, into this in more detail. So I don't want to uh, rehash a lot of that, but, um, general thing is diverging showing, uh, the difference in, in, in two extremes in a numerical sense, sequential is showing the degrees of one extreme in a numerical sense. Binary is two different uh, categorical values and qualitative is multiple categorical values. Uh, so to see this with, um, you know, it's election day here in the US and to see this with um, some election data uh, from 2000, uh, this is actually 2012 data um, so this is an example of diverging where we're seeing um, the uh, Obama versus Romney vote by county. And one thing I want to point out is you can you see a lot of purple here. So it's actually hard to see in some of these regions who was winning, Obama or Romney. And so when we're using a diverging theme like this, it might be good to actually add a, uh, a point in the middle that is neutral, like a like a light gray or something. And that makes it a lot easier to see, okay, this was slightly red, this was slightly blue. Um, it makes it a lot easier to read that on a diverging theme. Always consider putting a center point in there with a neutral color and making that, you know, where you want your, your center, your, uh, this in this case would be zero as a center point. Um, so uh, sequential, this is showing, okay, the degree of Romney's votes, right? So Obama may have had more votes than Romney in certain areas, but doesn't mean Romney had zero votes. So where did he get his most votes? Uh, so this is showing that in a sequential sense, and then you can uh, do the same thing and see it for Obama. Um, now, when you want to see who won each county, this is where binary uh, becomes very useful. So this is just a really clear way to see which county was won by Obama, which county was won uh, by Romney. So there's three different color themes that were used here, all with the same data, all that had different, uh, conveyed to different uh, uh, insights, uh, depending on how you wanted to communicate to your audience. Now, going back to just the showing you how some of this can be done with Color Brewer, there are um, multiple hues that you can pick here. Uh, you can use the eyedropper tool in Spotfire to pick these out. Um, just 
just in Spotfire, you can go to, let me just show you what I mean by that. Always, I always use this eyedropper tool. It's so useful when I need to pick a color and there's many other colors. So I'll go to color brew or some other color page and then you can select whatever color you want, uh, you know, right here and, 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 and get those custom colors rather than having to type in the, uh, the hex values here or um, going into the RGB values and putting the RGB values here. Um, while I am here though, I will say that this is the best way to control your lightness is going into the RGB values that are in the visualization properties and then using the slider. And that's how you can make different gra gradations of the sequential color thing. Um, so this is Color Brewer. I think it's really useful. So if you have a sequential theme and you want to show eight, you know, eight different layers, there they all are. Uh, if you want to show six different layers, if you have a diverging theme, you know, six, ten, whatever, it will build these all for you. You can change through some of these themes, um, and then you know you got qualitative here where you know you have different groupings or whatever, right? Um, I think this this is a little more modern. Um, <clears throat> this uh, is a learn UI design palette generator. So you get a number of colors here. You get the entire selection from the color wheel right there. So a little more flexibility. You can preview this on a dark background. You can preview this on a map. You can preview this on a chart. Uh, you can also get single hues and divergent schemes. So I really like this tool. And then if you really want to go intense and really want to uh, like really customize and build your own themes, you can go to Adobe Color Wheel and you can play with this. You get all of these different types of, you know, split complementary triads, monochromatic uh, that you can use. So monochromatic will show like different degrees and you get all of that information here for your hex values. Um, and you can also, let's say you have a corporate theme or some kind of visual theme you want to use. You can bring that into extract theme and you can just drop the, the file in here, the, the photo in here, and it'll actually extract the, the colors out and make a color theme for you. Um, and you can explore other themes here as well by just typing in things. And uh, uh, you can actually search like stock imagery. Like uh, I can just type in, I don't know, manufacturing. If I was making a manufacturing dashboard and it will find uh, different stock imagery and it will build uh, color themes for the stock imagery. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Colin because I think I'm, I'm kind of pushing on time here. So Colin's going to talk uh, a little bit about the, and Colin, feel free to, to go over if you'd like um, on time here, but he's going to be talking about improving dashboard usability and uh, adding uh, different features to your text areas with CSS, JavaScript, um, to make the overall dashboard assembly more usable for your audience. Colin? Great, thank you. I'll just share my screen. So, um, yeah. So a lot of interesting things there. I really like that Learn UI. Um, color is obviously a very subjective, important, but the use of colors is, is really crucial. Um, but one of the really important things that I think has become um, certainly applicable now that, you know, modern technology, webs, apps, allow you to present a lot of information. Um, the layout and how you present information and how you let people navigate through it, I think is really crucial part of data visualization and planning and design. It's not just about picking the right charts anymore. It's very much about how you present them, the tables and the navigation. So we built this um, wiki page. I won't go through this in, in detail because all the code and explanations here, but it's about making your tools more usable using like nice modern visuals and navigation so that you can get content to the person quickly. So we've got things like uh, links that make, make them look like nice links here, and um, we've got pop-ups and we've got uh, other fold-out panels. So and you can obviously go through these links in, the, in, in your own time, um, but what I'm going to do is take you through some examples where these have been used in, in Spotfire, and then I'll show you a quick demo of, of uh, how they're implemented. So this is a, a tool that was published a few um, a while ago by um, myself in my previous role. And what it's doing here is it's using a lot of what Neil's talked about. It's, and one of the key things when you're thinking about visuals um, is your layout. You know, you think about how people work through a tool. Um, you want it to be easy. So my ethos with tools is, you know, least uh, effort, minimum clicks, get the maximum out and make sure the tool or visuals that you pick answer the key questions, answer your use case. So 
Uh, from that point of view, you know, having a menu on the left is very normal in terms of like a person using a web page. So it's quite intuitive already. I don't need to know Spotfire, for instance, that I'm using Spotfire because this just looks like a normal web page. Um, but we've got some very clear tables, like Neil was pointing out, you know, summary stats and uh, broke down. We're using colours. Consistent colour use is important. Um, good is always blue in this, in this tool. Uh, almost good, if you like, uh, not quite as good as green and orange. And then we've got a table. The nice thing is here, this is just a spot for our text area, but it looks like a standard web page. When you click on it, it lets the person know what they've clicked on. And you can see all the information changing. What this is actually doing is reconfiguring the spot for our tools you click or changing the page, but the person using it doesn't need to know that. It's made very intuitive and easy for them. One click and they can learn about these different aspects uh, of the environment in this case. And again, if, when you put in visuals, always think about what people are going to ask next. So when you put, draw a chart, what's the purpose of this chart? So a map chart is great, obviously, for geographical information. Here's a use of um, pie charts. You know, pie charts often, like Neil said, aren't, aren't great. But with two or three categories, you can compare proportions really easily. Um, but what are you trying to achieve? Well, we want to show regional changes. You know, here there's a lot more um, less good than, say, up here in the north of Scotland. But then you want to also promote asking the next question. Well, what would the next question be after I've looked at this area? I might want to learn why. So again, we put a nice drop down using our spot for our text area. And when you click that, the person click that, it changes that. And, you, and again, keep the color scheme consistent uh, and simple. So this is a tool for the general public and, and people to use. So you want to think about your audience as well. And um, think about the number of charts and information you display. So, and you've got an, a menu here or along the top, but you really only want two or three things on the screen. Beyond that, it can be hard to read. It can be cluttered. People don't know what to look at. Maybe if you're working with a more technical audience, you can get away with more charts on the screen. But again, think about what charts are adding. Do you really need to add more charts? And really focus on getting the key charts on there very prominent. Again, the background of this map's um, faded a little bit so that you can really see you know, the, the detail here. So it's just an example of making a text area look better. So it's a text area in Spotfire. Um, another nice thing we do is link through. So we've got a simple table, like Neil said, where you've got the different uh, color per row to help your eyes see it, the coloring here again. Um, if you click a link, though, it actually opens another tool. So it's about making that user journey easy. So this is much more around the flow. Um, you know, people can easily navigate now between different aspects, different regions, and it's all in one or two clicks, and it's, it should be intuitive. So just to extend upon that, um, we also built this um, typical COVID dashboard that shows all, a lot of information from different countries and, and different sources across the world. And this is using those same principles again. This, there's a few key aspects here. The color scheme here, for instance, like Neil was saying, this is much more of that sort of cool colors because we're just trying to show the difference. And here you can see a nice gradient from red to blue. We're looking at the rate of change of cases. So it's very clear, but it's not too uh, bright. Um, so it's quite nice and you can see the hot spots or the places where the case rates are different. But again, we've got buttons here. So instead of like um, Spotfire's own default buttons or links, we've made them look more like spot uh, like web pages. And again, that's a little bit of HTML and CSS. I'll show that quickly in a moment. But there's another key trick here. This is a Spotfire tool, but you can scroll it. So you don't get limited by just having to fit in one page. People are used to scrolling through apps and web pages. So actually in Spotfire, for instance, you can change the page size. Um, so I, for instance, in this page, if I want to change its size, I can right click on page layout and I can say specify a height and say, OK, I want this height now to be 3000. And notice suddenly all my visuals are now over a much bigger page. So that gives me a much bigger canvas upon which to put all my visuals that I want to present to someone. So it's important to think about these things when you're laying out. How many charts do you want? You know, three, four, five on the screen in your visual focus is probably the most. Again, here you can see we're only ever really showing one or two uh, graphs in the same place with some text to explain it. Very consistent color usage. Um, you know, and again, if you delve into it, you know, we keep the colors consistent. And again, you're starting to see this type of nice gradients in here. But again, this is somewhere we've changed the flow by using text areas where you've got this menu that pops out so it doesn't take up too much screen. 
Um, and again, how to do all that is back on this, this page here that I showed you at the start. So I think there's some really key things, you know, focus on answering your questions and um, think about the flow and making it more intuitive for people to use. So it's more like using a web page. And one, one other uh, example of this um, is this dashboard I built again, uh, interesting use of colors where you keep, it's, a, it's looking at Formula One simulator uh, lap times that people have raced. And again, this, the colors are very bright here because we're trying to highlight something very important. The pink line or the purple line um, is the fastest line to take based upon real laps. And this is important because um, what, what actually happens in Formula One, for instance, so you've got to think about your context, is purple is always said to be the fastest lap. So if you zoom in, you actually see the, light, the line of the purple. And what we've done in this dashboard is actually keep that as a theme. So purple always means the most, um, the best or the highest value. So in this case, it's the fastest lap time. And here's a table where we're only highlighting really the key big numbers. The rest are sort of grayed out or normal, so they don't stick out. But even on the other maps, we've got purple again to show the highest speed um, and purple to show um, the highest braking. So it becomes consistent that we're always looking for the purple lines. You know, we're getting the quite complex charts. Again, you're trying to look at the purple versus the other colors. So it's, it's nice and consistent. So this is important, again, trying to make it nice and easy for your person, not putting too much on the screen at once. Um, and that, that can really help your users sort of differentiate. So another thing you'll often do uh, when you have a, a dashboard is you'll have lots of pages. And then when you try and put in text areas, you know, this is just a standard text area. Where we've got some controls in Spotfire. And you get a real freedom with text areas because you can put in your own HTML. And there's lots of things like you can use uh, HTML tables, et cetera. But one of the nice things you can do is actually make these layouts flexible and have all sorts of tricks. So this is um, an example where you can see lots of these tricks just using um, different HTML and JavaScript. This is all documented in that web page I've shown you. So things like tool tips, again, just to make your life easier for your um, users. Uh, you can hide content, et cetera. But for instance, just to style a button. So actually what's happening in this um, navigation area here, if I just delete this JavaScript, this is what it would look like without that. So again, it looks quite plain and it's not very interesting. Your eyes aren't drawn to these links, but with a bit of styling, I can change that. So in Spotfire, there's a technique where you can embed a CSS script inside a, a tag here. And this is all in the, the I won't go through the detail too much because it's in that wiki page that you can follow. But effectively, you can put any CSS in you, you want and then control how these look. So because Spotfire makes uh, links uh, um, as anchor tags here, I can just use normal CSS to completely redesign how that button looks. You know, for instance, if I change this to um, a different color, I can say the color black, for instance, and hit OK. Um, it should change all the, the, the tags that that worked with. What's, what's nice about that is you can then actually start designing flexible layouts. Imagine you had um, lots of pages. So we had this sort of marketing thing where we've got lots of pages. I've only put three in this, but imagine you had 30 pages. You know, I've seen reports with 10, 20, 30 pages. What you can do in Spotify then um, is you can have a menu and you might want to have the same menu for navigation um, on every page. So for instance, I've using a little bit of um, CSS and HTML, you can make a navigation that works in any layout. So here I've got this menu here. And what you can see is on every page, the same menus there, but it's subtly differently laid out. But I have actually used the same uh, text area for that. And what you'll see is if I change the size, it neatly reformats its size automatically for you. So that means no matter what you put on any page, if you've got a complicated page, and you've not got a lot of space, you just want to hide the menu, you can do that. And what happens is I've made this like a navigation. So when you click on this, it actually moves page for the person. So it becomes like this consistent navigation. How to do that? Well, again, it's just using CSS. So it's good to learn a little bit about JavaScript and CSS. And um, for instance, the one property that I'm using here that makes this all happen is I'm using what's called floats. So if you put some content uh, such as um, inside a div, so a divider in HTML, and tell it to float. What that means is it'll all float beside each other. So if it's got more space, it will use that. 
if it's got less space, it will fold them underneath. And now what I can do in every page, I can say just duplicate that, uh, put it on my new page I'm designing, and I've got the exact same um, menu all working again uh, as it should. It just needs to be linked So I think it's really important to use and learn these things. I think when you're an analyst and data scientist, often you know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript um, might be a bit um, new. It could be daunting. But I think when you want to get high usage of your tools, taking care of the flow, thinking about the amount of charts, and make it a nice consistent feel. Often your people you'll be sending these uh, dashboards out to or analytics or data science may not be as technical, they may not have the same experiences. So you want it to be familiar, like using Google or Amazon or something like that. And through these text areas and use of the right charts, I think we can achieve that. So I will stop there and hand back to, to Neil. Thanks, Colin. Let me share screen here. So just to kind of wrap up, um, I want to touch on that. I had a couple more uh, finer points on uh, just the finalize, final touches you can do. Um, but to transition from what Colin was saying, you know, this is a really awesome page. Uh, I put this in the chat. And there is a DXP at the bottom that you can download. Um, where is it? Bottom here. Oh, long page. Uh, there's a DXP at the bottom you can download. Now, I, you know, didn't use too much HTML and JavaScript and CSS in my own dashboards um, because I had never really kind of gone through figuring out how to, to to go about it, and I just it just really never got to it. But Colin's template here really has helped me. There's a lot of uh, just a lot of examples all in the same DXP, and it's made it much easier for me just to get started and get going. Uh, so you don't even really need to know how to code or need, need to know um, CSS to do this. You can just start getting, um, start those examples. And then as you get comfortable, you can start moving, you know, you know, ch uh, changing colors, changing little things. And, you know, this is a spot coffee dashboard uh, where we do su uh, supply chain logistics. And you can see that I've changed in the styling here. I've added a shadow. Um, you can use w3schools.org and they have, uh, different CSS styling that you can do to your buttons and and another element. So another element is, you know, I added a, a pop up here to explain what this button does rather than using a lot of space in the text area and, and having that text showing all the time it, it hides. Um, you know, another thing, you know, going to just some of the, the finer points here. Um, when you, you know, I was talking about colors and stuff, you can use you see how this is all green here. Um, that is all set from the primary color. So if you go to Canvas Styling, Edit Custom Theme, there's primary color. And I recommend picking a primary color so that when you don't know what color to use, you're just trying to show something that, like maybe it's a bar chart that doesn't need to have any color or it doesn't, uh, or, or you know, line chart where you're not really trying to color your categories uh, differently. They can all be the same color. Um, you use your primary color. Your every dashboard should have a primary color. That's your your go-to main color. And here I've used um, this uh, this green that you know might look like Starbucks or something, but uh, just coffee shop type green that I used. Um, so that's done in that setting. And the last little tip I'll show is so this is um, now in the web player. And you can see that there's this blue border around everything, and there's this this uh, these tabs here. And I don't really want to show the tabs because I've created this cover page. Uh, this cover page jumps to different parts of the uh, dashboard. Um, and I and I, I think if you had a lot of tabs, people aren't going to click through all the tabs. They're probably going to check the first three or so out. Um, so if you create kind of a cover page or a portal, it will encourage people to go into the different analyses that are relevant to them rather than having a long list of tabs. Um, but, you know, you, you can see these tabs are showing and that can be confusing. And there's also this blue at, at the top. So if you go to file and you go to share and you go to copy link, you can go into configuration blocks. So you go to advanced and you can choose what you want the viewer to see. So maybe I don't want them to be able to download the DXP. I don't want them to see the header status, toolbars, page navigation, edit button. I don't want them to see any of this stuff. So I can turn all those off. It's actually going to change the, the URL here. 
So then when you take that URL and you copy it and then you, you send it to someone and they open it, that URL, um, it's actually going to, so you can see now it's not showing the menu bar at the top. It's not showing at the bottom here. It's not showing the, the toolbar. So it's a more clean view for your consumer.